Welcome back to the Thornley Pavilion. Pretty happy place it is at the moment. Glenn McCrory has won his comeback fight, stopping his opponent, Terry Armstrong, in the second round. Now we're going to concentrate on the middleweight fight between Frank Eubanks, who's from Manchester, and after an iffy start, he's won three in a row. Up against him, Cornelius Carr, who's from these parts, from Middlesbrough. He's got a pretty impressive record. As you'll see, he rather fancies his chances. Unless you're a boxing buff, you probably won't have heard of Cornelius Carr. But the 21-year-old from Middlesbrough is absolutely sure that won't last long. As an amateur, he went to the top. He was an ABA finalist, and his professional career has been sharpened by several months training in the States. There's just one blemish on his record, a points defeat by Bocco George a couple of years ago. An experience which Carr says changed his outlook. I was at a stage in my career where I wanted to come home and train, and um, I did a lot of things wrong. But, I mean, it was a good experience for me at that time because uh, I've always wanted to train home in Middlesbrough. I know I can do it and uh, we're sparring and help, help from uh, the people who are behind me and I think it's going to work but uh, I think the, the, ex uh, the experience of being beat was good because I was getting a big head and it just brought me back down to the tether and think right if you want to do this game you've got to train very very hard and you've got to be dedicated I'm 21, 22 coming you know I think the strength's there it's just the experience you know and the help from the Cedric Cushion and John Spensley it would be good for me to go to the States and fight in Europe it would be a great night. Um, I'm going to be in very good shape. I promise you a good fight. Cornelius Carr, not short of a word or two. I wonder if he fights as well as he talks. Let's join the fight then. Cornelius Carr from Middlesbrough. Up against Frank Eubanks from Manchester. We pick it up at the start of round two. Round two of eight. Frank Eubanks in the yellow trunks. Cornelius Carr, the bright middleweight hope in the blue. combination from Carr. Just Ooh. a bit wild, Eubanks, messing with a lot. And that tires you out, doesn't it, Henry? Well, it does. If you're punching air all the time, that, that can be very tiring. But both of them, you can tell, they're trying to land their big punches, and uh, they're both uh, inclined just to miss a little bit. But uh, if they do land, it's, it could be curtains. Yeah. A good body shot of there as well from mm -hmm. Carr. Another good jab there. He's quite a nice punch picker, isn't he? Well, he does. He, um, as I say, I'd like to see him do this and pick him a little bit more than just, you know, uh, throw him blindly. And I think he could set the guy up nicely. Yeah. Eubanks must be careful of that left hook, particularly of Carr, which he's dug into the body and the head, and he's has a nice bit of variety about his work. Mm -hmm. He's got quite a repertoire of punches. Yeah, he's switching from body to head, head to body, which is good. The, um, he's not doing the same thing over and over, and he's varying it, which is, which is good. It keeps the other guy guessing. Yeah. And he's making Eubanks miss a lot more in this second round. Carr very much on top in round two so far. And he's landed with some good shots. Mm -hmm. Got a bit of pedigree too, uh, Cornelius Carr. He reached the ABA middleweight final in 1987 losing on points on that occasion to the very high class Rod Douglas who sadly is uh, now out of the game certainly seems to be a bit more beef doesn't there Henry about Carr's punching yeah I think he's the sharper puncher when he um uh, Eubank sometimes those slings the longer punches where I think uh, Carr is the shorter sharper puncher and um, as I say I think he's had a good round here and I just made him shade the first round slightly so uh, I think uh, Carr things are going pleasantly for him at the moment terrific straight right oh, there straight as well right I think he there. felt that Eubanks I think he must have yeah That's one thing, Eubank, he's took the punches well. I mean, he, um, he doesn't look as though he's been in too much distress once he's taken them. He's come off. Pulled him around the back of the head a little bit, knocked him off balance that one more, I think. Well, was Carr shaken up a little bit by that? It certainly oh. seems to be, but he's back to his work now. And I think that might have just lifted him up a gear even further. 
started to let go with the combinations that Eubanks tying him up a bit inside. Mm -hmm. End of a good second round that for Cornelius Carr there in the blue trunks as he goes back to his corner. Yep. It's been our first chance to have a look at uh, Carr and I must say so far I'm pretty impressed with what I see. He's obviously got a little bit of learning to do before he reaches yeah. the very top level but uh, there's his record. He's only 21. 21, well that's only young. I mean I don't know um, how long he's been a pro, just what a year or so or... A pro he's since September 15, 87, so? actually. Oh, 87, Henry. yeah, he's been two or three years, yeah, yeah. And well, he's good, he, um, he's, he looks good, doesn't he? That's the big thing, he looks, uh, and he looks so he's, it's a learning process at the moment, and um, and that's what it's all about. I mean, fights like this, he's going to learn, you know, you don't learn nothing if you're in there for a minute and a half or a round and a half. If you're in there for three, four, five rounds, that's when you start learning things, and that's what it's all about at this stage of the career. Yeah. So, Frank Eubanks getting some instructions there from his corner. And that second round went uh, very decidedly against Eubanks after an action-packed opener. Round three, then, of eight rounds at middleweight and Cornelius Carr in the blue trunks here. Just to remind you, Carr, the local boy from Middlesbrough, went to the St. Peter's Comprehensive School in the South Bank area of the city. work there by Carr. He slipped a lot of those jabs of well, Eubanks. Yeah, they're, um, it's just more or less a pouring, isn't it, from Eubanks at the moment. That's just like a measuring stick, I suppose, for the, for the big right hand he wants to sling. The better punches, I think, are coming from Carr, I must say. He, um, he's got this nicely at the moment in control, I think. Carr's reached the point in his career where, within the next year or so, he'd be looking to gate crash into the British middleweight title picture. Strong weight, of course, though, in Britain with the likes of Harold Graham, Nigel Benn, uh, Watson, of course, Chris Eubank. There's plenty of talent around. That's a good left hook. Eubank's coming back in this round a bit and digging in some body shots as well. He's making Carr work for this. Well, that was. He, he, um, he's made uh, Carr miss a few punches there, hasn't he? So, see, that's what I'd sort of see Carr stand off and pick his punches a little bit. He, he, he gets better results if he stands up and picks his punches I think and comes in behind that left jab of these yeah. and he mix it like this sometimes he makes him miss and he just falls onto one or two punches himself that's better Come on behind the left. I didn't follow it through though really no, did he just landed really. with a jab yeah. landed with single jabs always hard for a prospect because the expectations are on you and uh, you, there's always that feeling that you not only got to win, but win looking good. And you've got to win good, and you've got to look good, yes. Yeah. Oh, it's, a, it's a tough old game, this boxing game. <laughs> Even you found out that sometimes, oh, Now and again, now and again. <laughs> Big chance from the crowd of Corny. Corny. Oh, that's good, good right hand. Good right hand punch, that. It shook him, I think, yeah. And Eubanks sensibly stayed in close and let his head clear a bit after taking that combination. Good punches from the middles for boy. And the left hook again. He's much the sharper and snappier puncher. And they do look kind of arm shots, Eubanks, a lot of them, don't they? Yeah. He's not putting a lot of shoulder turn into it. No. Well, I made the uh, car just stay back down again. Yeah. It was fairly level up until the last last half a minute, three quarters of a minute, I think, Carr stole it. Yeah. So there's Frank Eubanks. Uh, they're just worried about a little graze by the side of the left eye. Doesn't look anything much. 21 years of age he is. Uh, Ten fights, six wins, all by KO, and four defeats. In fact, uh, he lost the first two in his career. So he's picked up quite well from then. Picked up well, yeah. It's not a bad little record. He's got something to build on there. Yeah. And I think he's, uh, he's got ambitions and he's a capable opponent, but he's in quite deep here with the likes of Cornelius Carr. Some of the people at ringside there, some reporters. Carr looking uh, relatively unmarked. 
Gumshield going back in, George Feeney there in the corner, famous old boxer from these parts. And with him, Marty Turner in the uh, blue top there. Round four of eight then at middleweight, Cornelius Carr in the blue and Frank Eubanks in the yellow trunks. Carr on top so far. Working well behind his jab at the start of the round. His only defeat, Cornelius Carr, was in three rounds against uh, quite a good fighter called Boko George. But at that point in his career, Carr had been admitting that he had been cutting corners in training a bit. He's not doing that at the moment. Eubanks, though, is still got some pride in him, hasn't he? He's Henry? coming back in this round. He's had the better of it this, so, this round so far. Mustn't let him domineer it, dominate the fight like that. Uh, Carr, if he wants to win it, he's got to stay on top of his man. Right? Yeah. So Eubanks giving quite a good account of himself here, showing plenty of ambition. Looks as if he's here to win the fight if he can, and he's in good nick. Good condition. It's obviously worked well in preparation. Eubanks, who's been a professional for 17 months, so the edge and experience is certainly with Carr. <coughs> Good combination there, he called him with Carr. Yeah, he shook a Eubanks a little bit there. I thought Carl was having a little breather in this round, but he's uh, he's just come back into it a little bit more in this last 25, 30 seconds. Yeah. Quite an interesting fight, Henry. Oh, quite it's it. Well, it's swinging backwards and forwards, isn't it? And um, it's a great little scrap. They've start, They've been going like this from the first round, so there's no lack of action. That's for sure. They're giving it 100 percent. Good left hooks. Oh, He's good, good with that left hook, is Cornelius yeah. Carr. That's his danger shot, isn't it? Brings it in from the, on the inside beautifully. Yeah. Yeah. Eubank started this round pretty well, but Carr's got back in it in the last in minute, minute oh, and a yeah. half or yeah. so. Oh, yeah, he's come back in it now. Second half of the round, he's done well. Carr. With a telegraph right hand punch there. But <laughs> yeah. they both know they've been in a fight here. It's a tough, hard one. Ooh, he meant that one. <laughs> oh, okay. well, it's good Four rounds gone. Cornelius Carr getting. Some uh, urgent instructions at close quarters from Marty Turner there in the corner. Cars advised by John Spenceley, but uh, essentially self-managed. Came back from the States in December. He had a couple of uh, first-round wins over there and did some sparring with the high-class Darren Van Horn, among others. Now, this is his combination that you picked out, Henry, in the round. Very good. A left hook. The left hook. And that was a uh, good shot. It was dangerous with that uh, left hook. Is yeah, I think Carl. that's one of his better punches, Carl's better punch, and he likes that left hook. Used to be a favourite of mine, unfortunately. I used to like it on the break, on the, in the inside, but they, uh, they stopped all that many years ago. <laughs> Henry's hammer. Round five. Cornelius Carr. You know, very interesting little fight here against Frank Eubanks. Eubanks in the yellow trunks. Here. They do look to be arm shots, a lot of Eubanks's, whereas there's a real meat about Carr's work when he lands. But made to miss with that combination. Throwing a lot of leather, but not landing with a great deal, Eubanks, so far in this round. No, that left hand is just a poor, uh, oh, that was a good little combination. Left hook, right cross, that shook him a little bit. Yeah. 
I think Carl just sees that I'll be getting on top a wee bit now, I think. The punches could be telling on uh, Eubanks, I think. Uh, he could just be feeling a little bit more now. <laughs> Eubanks, by the way, is no relation to the WBO middleweight champion Chris Eubank of Brighton. This fellow's from Manchester, he's very much a northern lad. And he heard him again there, sent him into reverse gear against the ropes. And I wonder if this might be nearing its end here. Eubanks has taken quite a bit, particularly with those hooks. And not too much coming back now, Henry. No, I think he's, um, as I said, he looks like he's getting on top. Oh, everyone thought the referee was going to stop it. But I think he thought he was going to stop, stop it, it out of yeah. Bryson, then thought up better of it. Yeah. Well, Unless Eubanks stops it. Good all left. I think here, the time for the stoppage oh, is very close. Yeah, it's got and, to, well, got to stop it. Oh, yeah. Bryson does stop it and had to stop it. Carr is up on the rings, saluting the crowd, and big, big acclamation for him. They enjoyed that fight, it was a good one. And Carr wins on a fifth round stoppage over the very game and courageous but basically outgunned Frank Eubanks who gave a good account of himself but basically he was in too deep. And Carr here takes his record to 15 wins and one defeat. And that kind of performance will do him no harm at all on the ladder up towards contention for the British middleweight title in the months or maybe next couple of years to come. Well, it was a good performance. I think he's going to be pleased with himself there because Eubanks uh, was, as we could see in the first, say, three rounds, was a slippery customer, was willing to trade punches with him. But I think uh, Carl was quite happy thinking that way. If he wants to stand there and swap him with me, um, I'm the better puncher, the harder puncher, and it would tell him the long run. And I think it certainly did. The fourth round, there were signs that Carl was getting on top. They're beautiful left hook there and the right cross. Look at them. These are the finishing shots. This is shots, the finishing Henry. punch where the referee had to jump in there because the kick could have been in trouble. Yeah, that I think was well done. Mm. Gentlemen, please, ladies and gentlemen, after one minute fifty-three seconds of the fifth round, you pants was unable to continue. Your winner from Middlesbrough, Cornelius Carr. So a good win for Cornelius Carr, Your and I think it's fair to say that the stoppage contest. was not premature. So win number 15 out of 16 for Cornelius Carr, that fight recorded earlier. John, I was impressed with you. Yeah, very much so. Great talent, I think. Uh, he's got all the punches, all the ability. Great uh, uh, control of the fight in the ring. Economical. Tremendous. Okay. Well, we two were impressed, but I suspect not as much as Cornelius himself. Here he is talking with Paul Dempsey. Corny, congratulations. It was never easy, was it? A tough campaign of Eubanks. No, he's, uh, he's been very active, and that's why I haven't been active. Uh, it showed a little bit of ring rusty, but I got to him in the end, more power and patience and help from Matty Turner, my, my trainer. And uh, good hometown support. You're obviously a local boy here. Yeah. And, uh, it was beginning to look as though you needed a bit of a push from the crowd. They really got behind you. Yeah, well, uh, the first, there was a lot of nerves, pre-fight nerves, because it was the first time I boxed in my home area. And there's been uh, a lot of fight, a lot of people coming to watch me tonight. And there was a lot of pressure. But next time, it'll be better. It'll be better performance. Well, things overall are going very well in your career so far. Just the one defeat. Yeah. And you're growing up now in a professional area, which has been a very rich scene for British middleweights. So we've had a string of world-class middleweights. We've got Ben Eubanks at the top. Is that the aim to get into that class? Do you believe you're good enough? Well, I'm only 21. People, people uh, think I'm about 28 the way they go on. Oh, he's this and he's that. But I know I've got Marty behind me. We're going to take things steady. And then when, when the time's right, you'll see Cornelius Carr go right to the top. Tell me one thing uh, briefly. You and Glenn McCrory, amongst other things, share not only a hometown here, but also a bit of experience in the USA. Yeah. Now, when you went to fight in the USA, there were a couple of stopovers in the Louisiana State Penitentiary. Explain. Yeah, yeah that's right. Um, well, I didn't know until the night before that we were going to the uh, penitentiary. It's like the roughest prison in the United States. It's in Angola. There are a lot of murderers and things. But uh, I didn't realize what I'd done until I come away from the place. And I asked uh, two of my sparring partners, or supposedly sparring partners, 
Um, I said to him, how long are you in for? He said, a long time. <laughs> and I found out they were in for murder. I'm glad that you got out in one piece. Yeah, good luck with the mind. career. Good night for you tonight. Thank you. See, See you again. Thanks very much. Yes, I'm sure we're going to be hearing a lot more of Cornelius Carr. The main news tonight from the Thornham Pavilion is that Glenn McCrory very much back in business as a heavyweight for the second time around. And he stopped his opponent, Terry Armstrong, in the second round. Much relief, and we reckon he's going to be a contender. Yeah, he really uh, boxed well in the second round. He came out, he lay in from the first, came out quick and really changed his style and tried to impress his punches upon his opponent. And I thought that impressed me. Do you think he should move up pretty well straight away to take on the likes of Lewis or do you think three or four more fights? No, like I think, this one? yeah, more fights, definitely, you know, just to get him into, I'd like to see him have about another four, five, even six fights, you know, off, off the trot, to get used to getting in there and really planting those punches in and making the most of what power he does have. Okay, John, thanks very much for joining us this evening. Don't forget, more sport, more boxing on Eurosport on Monday night.